All right, so we are starting a new uh, little indicator or a little unit here. We're doing volume. It's very much like um, uh, when we were finding area of a circle and area of a square and area of a triangle. It's just a, a formula you need. So for those of you at home, I want you to take a minute, pause this video, and write down the formulas. And so for those of you in here, I was hoping I could make it bigger, but I can't. So if you've got it jotted down in your notebook, we're going to just run through it really quick just to make sure you have it jotted down right. So kind of follow along with me and make sure that you have it written down right. So for vol and, and what volume means, if you think about like this cup right here, right? If I was going to ask you the volume of this cup, I would just ask you how much water can I put in it? That's volume. How much space is inside of it is what volume is. So if you think about a box, right, if you have, a, if you have like this box here, if you're finding volume, you're asking how much room is there inside the box. So when we found area of a square, it was just a flat square. And when we found area, we found how much space does just this side take up. And when we found perimeter, it was if we were, if this was, right, just a square on the ground and we wanted to walk the perimeter, we would walk this side plus this side plus this side plus this side. If we wanted to know the area of this lid, we would want to know length times width. And that told us how much space the whole top of the lid is. Volume is a little different. Volume is 3D images. And so you got to be able to put something in it. And the volume is how much it can hold. Okay? So the volume of a cube is A cubed. And it tells you there under variables, the A just is the side length. And you know a square, right? If you know one side of a square, you know all the sides of a square. So if with a, with a cube, if you're given a side length or an edge length, edge is a cube, think of a Rubik's cube, if you're given one of the side lengths, then you can find the volume by taking side cubed or if your calculator, if you have a like a real basic calculator and you can't figure out how to punch three cubed in your calculator, just put side times side times side. So if the side length say is four, you would just put four times four times four. Okay. For rectangular prism, you need length and width and height. And you just take length times width times height. And you'll notice the volume formula is very similar to the area of one of the sides. So when you have area of the side, it's length times width. When you add in that multiplying by the height, that's how you get the inside space that it can hold. So length times width times height. For a cylinder, okay, a cylinder is pi times r squared times h. So... Again, if you don't have the pi symbol on your calculator, you can always do 3.14. That's going to be an estimate, but for me, it'll be close enough. When you're doing Khan Academies, pay attention to what they want because uh, they may want it rounded or they may want it exact. Okay? So pi r squared, um, and then r is the radius, and you guys already know that. And so if you're given the diameter, what do you have to do before you can plug it into this formula? Anybody, anybody? Divide it by what? Yeah, divide it in half. If you're given the diameter, that's great information, but you cannot plug a diameter into this equation. So you have to cut it in half and then square it times pi times height. Uh, a cone, okay, is one-third times pi times r squared times h. So you'll notice a cone and a cylinder are a lot alike. Only a cone is one-third of the cylinder's volume. And then last is the sphere or a ball. And the ball is four-thirds times pi times r cubed, okay, or radius cubed. All right, any questions on that? We're just going to work through a couple of examples, um, nothing major, and then uh, I've got a packet for you. And for those of you at home, you'll pull up the packet on Cami. It's a four-page packet, but it's meant to last you um, until Thursday. So, um, all right. So, let me pull up a blank page here, and we'll do a few examples.
Oops, sorry. Hang on, I need to get it to where you guys can see it here in the classroom. There we go. That's what I needed. All right, there we go. Now you guys can see it in here as well. Okay, so we will just do a couple of examples. So, and you cannot make fun of my drawings here because they're going to be really sad, but that's okay. There we go. All right, so first one we're going to do is a cube. And so I'm going to sketch myself a nice little cube here. I promise it won't be nice, but we're going to pretend it's a square cube. Pretty close. About as good as I'll ever get. All right. So we've got a cube. And say we're given information that this cube from here to here, okay, and it can be any edge. It doesn't matter. We'll say that it is 4.5 inches, okay? Now, again, you can be given that side. Because it's a cube, you could be given this side. You could be given this side. It doesn't really matter. They're all going to be identical. And the formula, right, for volume is V equals A cubed. So volume here equals 4.5 cubed. And so if you get your calculators out, punch in 4.5. And then let me see a couple of your calculators to see what your buttons look like. If you have a calculator like Corbin's up in the right hand corner, you just have a button that says X cubed. That's it. Yep, 4.5 and then hit that button right here. Yep, hit equals. There you go. And let's uh, let's round to the 10. Did you get it, Cole? You have a calculator like his? Okay, let's see. Some of the calculators are different. That's okay. So on yours, uh, let's see. There's a this is the main one up there. This one is a kind of a weird one. And I'll play with it and see if I can't get it to you see up there that third button. Yeah, there you go. Okay. And like I said, if you ever, right, cannot, if you ever have a calculator where you cannot find the button or you're on your phone's calculator or something. This means, and remember that this is 4.5 inches. So what volume means is 4.5 inches times 4.5 inches times 4.5 inches. Now, why did I write inches three times? So what did you guys get when you took 4.5 cubed? Somebody tell me. What is it? 91.1. Now, how am I going to label this? Inches what? Yeah. The reason I wrote inches every time is to show you that if you're taking side times side times side, you're taking inch times inch times inch, which means your answer needs to be inch cubed. Okay? So side times side times side. Okay? That's volume of a cube. Now let's look at volume of a rectangle. So I'm going to dry my fancy rectangle here. 
It's a good thing I'm not an art teacher, isn't it? And when you're given a rectangle, you're going to be given the height. So we'll say the height over here is 4. You're going to be given the length. So the length here is going to be 7. And then you're going to be given the width. And the width is like how far back the box goes, right? So the width here we'll say is uh, 3. Now, each one of these is also going to have a label. So we'll say these are feet. This is a big box, okay? So four feet, seven feet, and three feet. So when you're doing your equation, it's V equals, and it's length times width times height. So I'm not going to write feet each time, but we got to keep that in mind. It's length times width times height, okay? So in your calculator, 21, or, three to, or 7 times 3 is 21, times 4 is 84, and then how would I label this? Feet what? Atticus, could you close that door for me, please? I appreciate it. How would I label this? Think about what I multiplied. I multiplied 7 what? I multiplied 7 feet by 3 feet by 4 feet, right? So how many feet did I multiply? So it'd be cubed. So that the same it's, it's not, and I'll show you why here in just a second. Well, I shouldn't say that. Well, yes, the yes, everything will be cubed. And the only reason I said, I'll, let me tell you, let me explain it to you, is because remember if you have pi times r squared times h, yeah. the pi doesn't have the feet on it. So it wouldn't be to the fourth. I'll show you that here in a second when we do the next one. All right, are we good on this? Okay, um, so now let's do a cylinder. So a cylinder is round on top. Think of like a Coke can. Coke can is an example of a cylinder. <laughs> and a cylinder, you need radius of the circle, right? We need radius, and then we also need the height of the Coke can or of the cylinder. So here, let's say that our radius is 4.2 inches, and our height is 9. Okay, so there's our cylinder. Our formula for volume is pi times r squared times h, right? Is that correct? Yes. All right. So we need to. Volume is, we're going to keep pi as pi. Our radius here is 4.2 squared. And remember, since it's squared, think about it, that's inch times inch because it's squared. It's the radius twice. So 4.2 inches times 4.2 inches. And then times height, and our height here is 9, and that's also inches. Notice our pi doesn't have inches, because pi isn't a measurement, it's a number. So it does not have inches with it. So when we put this in our calculator, you're going to hit your pi symbol, and then you're going to take times, and then in parentheses, right, 4.2 squared, Close your parentheses, times 9 equals, somebody tell me what you get, uh, and round it to the tenth. It's all right, what'd you get? You got it right. Now, what am I going to label this? Okay, tell me what you punched in your calculator. Like, tell me the numbers, or, I mean, tell me the buttons in a row. You forgot to square your 4.2. So there's a couple of different ways you can put this in your calculator. All right? And you do it however you want. It's whatever's easiest. Because when you're multiplying, does it matter if you multiply 4 times 2 times 3 or 3 times 2 times 4? Does order matter? So in your calculator, if it's easier for you, hit 4.2 times 4.2. That's 
the radius squared, hit equals. Then hit the times button again and hit pi and hit equals if you want. And then hit the times button again and hit the nine. If using the parentheses messes with you, just hit equals in between every times, okay? Um, and either way, you should end up with 498 point, and then I got 7592, blah, 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 but we rounded it to the tenth, so we went with eight. And then it's inches squared because it's radius squared, so there's two inches there, times the height, which is another inches, so it's inches cubed. Cole, did you get 498? Here, let me see what you're punching in. So square your radius first. 4.2 squared, do that one first. That's cute, so we're going to square it right there. And then hit equals, and then hit times, and then pi, which is, it is, but before, see how it's gray, or brown? If you want it to be the brown button, you've got to hit the brown shift key first, and not hit pi. Now hit equals, now hit times, now hit equals. There you go. Everybody else got 4.98? Atticus, you good? All right. Honestly, the hardest part of this whole indicator is figuring out, or this whole section is figuring out your button. So it's not bad at all. All right. So now we're going to do a cone. And a cone is a circle at the bottom. And then it goes up to a peak and back down. Okay. So kind of think like a dunce hat upside down or a. Uh, making me hungry now, like a sugar cone, ice cream cone, upside down. You want to know how much ice cream that cone will hold? All right, so some important information that you'll be given with a cone is, again, radius. You'll need radius, so if you're given diameter, be careful to half it. And then the other thing is the height of the cone. So here, let's say that our radius is, um, we'll make this big, we'll make it 16 centimeters. And our height, we will make uh, 22 centimeters. So let's think about our formula here. So it's V equals one third pi R squared H. Okay, those are all, that's all times in the middle of it. It's one third times pi, pi times R squared. So this is just really about pushing a bunch of buttons in your calculator. Now, you can do it one of two ways, okay? You can do, if you have a, if you have a fraction button on your calculator, you can actually input the fraction one point or one over three. What if you don't have a fraction button on your calculator? What is one over three the same as putting in your calculator? One divided by three equals... And then this is the button. This is literally, I'm writing all, all the buttons. You'll hit 1 divided by 3 equals times pi equals times. Now I'm going to put my radius in twice here rather than trying to use parentheses here and square it. So, uh, oops, equals. Hang on. I ignore that pi. Sorry. So I have 1 divided by 3 equals and then don't clear it, just hit the times button, and then hit pi equals, don't clear it, hit the times button, and hit 16 equals, I want to try something when we're done here, and then hit times 16, because we have to do the radius twice, equals, and then times 22, and then equals. And I want you guys to tell me what you get, and then I want to try a different sequence on your calculator and see if it works. Yes, sir? 5,897.8 what? Centimeters what? Good. Centimeters cubed. All right, I'm going to punch it in my calculator. So I've got one-third times pi times... Because my calculator, I can get a little fancy on my buttons here. So I'm going to punch it in a little bit different way, and we're going to check it. Times 22. Five th okay, good. Now, that was a lot of times and equals. Now I want you to try something different, okay? In your calculator, I still want you to do the 1 divided by 3 equals, because that gives you your fraction, okay? Now, without hitting equals, 
I want you to hit times pi times 16 times 16 times 22 and hit equals. Good. That's what I was hoping. I wanted to test your calculators and see. So once you do your divided, 1 divided by 3 equals, that takes care of your fraction. The reason you do that separate is because 1 divided by 3 equals is the same as punching in 1 over 3. Then it's just a run of times. Times pi, times radius, times radius, times height. Okay, punch your radius in twice. That takes care of the radius squared. All right, everybody good there? All right, last one is the sphere. And so for a sphere, it's a circle, but it's not a flat circle. Think of it like a ball, a baseball. And again, you need the radius, and we're going to get fancy here, and I'm going to give you diameter. So the diameter of our sphere is, I'll put D equals, uh, we'll do 22. All right, so the diameter of our sphere is 22. So for the volume, it is 4 thirds times pi times radius, is it cubed? Yeah. Not right? All right, so let's break this down a little bit. 4 thirds times pi times what? What's our radius? 11. Because we were given diameter, radius is half of that. So it's radius cubed. Now, in your calculator, you're still going to hit 4 divided by 3 equals. That takes care of your fraction. Then times pi times 11 times 11 times 11. That takes care of your radius cubed, or 3 times. And then equals. Tell me what you get. Fifty thousand one hundred. What? Oh, I didn't say, did I? There we go. We'll do centimeters. Centimeters what? Cubed. Did everybody else get that? Five zero one seven seven. Nope. Okay. Let's see what you're punching in. Okay. So that means something got punched in. So put four divided by three equals. That takes care of your fraction. Now hit times. Pi equals. Oh, no, you don't. Yeah, that's fine. Equals now times 11 times 11 times 11 equals. There you go. Simple. Yeah. Punch it in again. Everybody punch it in. Uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. Montana, what'd you get? 5,571. That's what I got, too. Yeah, punch yours in again, Corbin, because you got something different. Yeah, maybe. That's okay. Atticus, what'd you get? Uh, 5,500. 55,752? Oh, no, no, no. No, you're right. 5,575 point what? Three? Uh, two seven. Yeah, if we rounded up to the 10.3. Yeah, so let me, let me erase this. I got it. That's okay. That's why we check them with everybody. So let me write the right answer on here. Cole, tell me what it was again. 5,575.3. Centimeters what? Cubed. Because it's 11 times 11 times 11, it's centimeters times centimeters times centimeters. Okay? Everybody good? If you get syntax error, it just means the calculator didn't like the order you punched it in. Okay? You can get fancy. So when I say you can get fancy, you can do something like this in your calculator. You can use parentheses times pi times parentheses again, 11 cubed parentheses. It means the same thing. If your calculator lets you put fractions in, you can do it like this. But you have to use parentheses if you're going to do something fancy like that, okay? If you have a calculator, you don't want to try to get fancy. If it's cubed, just put times, 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 times it three times, okay? All right, so for those of you at home, go ahead and click load. It's going to load a four-page packet with cubes, rectangulars, cylinders, cones, and spheres. And on the page where it's spheres, you'll notice your worksheet tells you to find the surface area in volume. Don't worry about the surface area. Just find the volume, okay? And email me if you have any questions.